After more than eight years of armed conflict in Yemen, damning evidence reveals human rights violations and breaches of international humanitarian law by all warring parties, including the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which has led a military intervention in Yemen since March 2015 and has conducted widespread attacks against civilian targets. Since the beginning of the war, Canada has exported more than $8 billion in weapons to Saudi Arabia, including the types of arms deployed in battle. Since I previously questioned the government through you, multiple reports by expert international monitors have specifically denounced Canada's continued arms exports as perpetuating the crisis. Through an access to information request, there was recently a report with internal to global affairs that further documented that Canada discusses internally the economic value of continuing with this practice with Saudi Arabia. These arms transfers violate Canada's obligation under the Arms Trade Treaty to which this government acceded in 2019. Under Article 11, Canada is obligated to take measures to prevent diversion of its arms exports to third countries. While other countries have ceased their arms exports, Saudi Arabia is now the top non-U.S. destination for Canadian weapons. Senator Gold, why won't Canada comply with its obligations under the Arms Trade Treaty by ending its arms exports to Saudi Arabia? Senator Gold. Well, thank you for the question and for underlying the, uh, the, 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 the tragedies that, that are happening in Yemen. I, and I wish that was the only place these were happening. Um, since 2020, the government has uh, 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 put into place a, a process whereby permits for exports to it, uh, of, of its arms uh, need to be, uh, are not granted automatically, but need to be um, uh, reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis, and Canada continues to do that. And, uh, and uh, it's the position of the government that it will continue to do that um, and uh, to, uh, to ensure uh, that uh, this industry uh, is uh, 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 carried on in, in a responsible way. Senator McFedrin, do you have a brief supplementary? <laughs> very, I'll try to be very brief, Your Honour. Thank you. Um, Quick question, the document that was recently revealed by the publication, The Breach, through the access to information indicated that Global Affairs Canada was emphasizing how Saudi Arabia is an important market for Canadian companies, including through large infrastructure contracts for SNC, Lavalin and Bombardier. Could you help me understand how this fits with Canada's feminist foreign policy? Senator Gold. Well, that's, that's, that, that is a good question, and I, and I don't really have uh, the ability to, to, to answer it adequately. Uh, our relationships with the world, whether commercial, political, strategic, intelligence sharing, and others, are complex and uh, uh, polycentric and multifaceted. And uh, in that regard, um, there's no doubt going to be uh, tensions and pushes and pulls between the various objectives that, 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 that characterize our foreign policy. Canada's feminist foreign policy is a serious engagement by this government and, and, and indeed uh, emulated and, and admired by others and will continue to be so, notwithstanding the fact that we live in a complicated, messy world and that our, and that our, our, act, our, our actions on behalf of Canadians, companies and individuals, uh, may not always uh, line up with everyone's expectations of what the priority should be.